The purpose of these videos is to standardize the performance of transthoracic echocardiographic studies and to help the learner optimize and troubleshoot image acquisition. This initial short video will serve as a demonstration of the standardized sequence for a 2D echocardiographic examination. We will not perform any measurements and will only demonstrate how to obtain the views. Please refer to each specific video of this University of Toronto IDCCM Critical Care Echocardiography Series for guidance on how to obtain and improve each view. A good echocardiographic study requires an excellent preparation. Even in the intensive care unit, you should try to position the patient in left lateral decubitus for apical and parasternal windows, unless there is a contraindication, such as spine precautions or when inappropriate in case of severe cardiovascular or respiratory instability. The goal is to shift the heart laterally. Often, positioning a wedge or a pillow underneath the right side is necessary to support this position. If possible, raise the patient's left arm above the head to increase the size of the intercostal spaces. Try to practice performing the examination from either side of the patient. In ICU, one side may not be easily accessible due to presence of other equipment. However, Unless you are performing an emergency study, try to position yourself in a comfortable position. Make sure that the ultrasound system is located close to you and the patient to allow the simultaneous scanning and manipulation of the settings. The first step requires recording of patient ident identification data, example, full name, date of birth, and identification number, and essential clinical data, such as vital signs, height and weight, ventilator settings, and vasoactive agents, if applicable. If the patient is on any form of extracorporeal life support, this information should also be recorded. Another crucial step is the placement and connection of the ECG electrodes. Make sure you have a good ECG signal on your monitor. Once the patient is in the correct position and you have recorded all the necessary patient data, you can start your examination. Our sequence starts from the parasternal views, but you may choose to start with the subcostal views as long as you follow a structured sequence and do not skip any view nor step. Your examination should start with the parasternal long axis view. Start by including the far field with at least 20 centimeters of depth. This will enable you to diagnose pleural and or pericardial effusions and to assess the descending thoracic aorta, for example, signs of dissection or enlargement. Once you have obtained the far field view, you should then decrease the depth to focus on cardiac structures. However, try to keep the descending aorta in the field. After obtaining the parasternal long axis view, you will then move first to the parasternal right ventricular inflow tract view, and subsequently to the parasternal right ventricular outflow view. You will obtain several images of the heart in its short axis at different levels. Usually, we start at the level of the aortic valve. This view is also called right ventricular inflow outflow view. By tilting the transducer's tail slightly toward the right shoulder, you will obtain more apical views. The parasternal short axis view at the level of the mitral valve The parasternal short axis view at the papillary muscle level, also called mid-papillary view. And the parasternal short axis view at the apical level. After completing the parasternal views, you will move to the apical window, starting with the apical four-chamber view. From the apical four-chamber view, you will then obtain the apical five-chamber view.
Next step will be to obtain the apical two-chamber view. From this view, by increasing your rotation counterclockwise, you will be able to obtain the apical three-chamber view, also called apical long axis view. From this view, you may also obtain the apical right ventricular inflow view. When moving to the subcostal window, you will first obtain the subcostal four-chamber view, followed by views of the inferior vena cava and the abdominal descending aorta. When parasternal views are of poor quality, short axis views can be obtained from the subcostal windows, but from a different perspective. Tilting the transducer from patient's right to left will allow you to obtain the right ventricular inflow outflow view. The short axis of the mitral view. The mid papillary view and the view of the apex. Final step of the transthoracic examination is the suprasternal notch view with identification of the long axis of the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, and the beginning of the thoracic descending aorta. Often, brachiocephalic, left common carotid, and subclavian arteries can be identified. Finally, the short axis of the right pulmonary artery can be identified below the aortic arch. This concludes our 2D transthoracic examination sequence.